now the roller is already at work. This, uh, this upper area is particularly where um, we had the concrete truck sink earlier. And so we're really happy to be having it rolled. Don pointed out we have nine guys here total today. There's some question whether um, our Parker was had been saying they were going to do this in two two batches, do the upper section and then the lower. But I think we're going to have to see. I bet if they can do it today, they will. Because today it's supposed to be 66 out. Saturday night it is going to freeze, and then again on Monday night. So if they don't do it today, they're probably off to mid next week to come back. And I just feel like. They probably won't. At this point, we're, we're ready. I think they've done a fabulous job of getting the lines straight and the ground prepped. And now with adequate rolling, I think we'll be in a, a good shape. Well, we have more new and previously unseen activity. I think they're setting posts for the, uh, or what did you call them, stakes, to make sure that the slope and depth is right. Looking good. Okay, huge advancement here. So given that it's um, a big slab, this upper slab in particular, they're putting down plastic underneath the concrete and it just acts as um, another substrate to help uh, strengthen the concrete in its um, longevity and, and cracking. At least that's what I understand so far. So exciting. All right, well, we stepped out for um, about an hour and a half, and lo and behold, we have concrete. It's about going on 10.30 now. Walking along, and you'll see these guys are moving. I'll get it from a different angle, but this is the, uh, the screeding that happens here. Is so cool. Wow. That is heavy work. Okay, here's the upper angle. That one concrete truck just poured away. Don, you're, you were mentioning about this plastic. I couldn't explain it very well earlier. So, um, well, what the, is plastic, the plastic the plastic is going to help the concrete cure properly okay. because there's no lower ground moisture pulling up into the concrete as oh. it dries. So it's going to actually strengthen the concrete I since see. the moisture uh, content is is in check. It's not going to be a factor yeah. from the ground to the concrete. Especially on the upper slab, right? Yeah. That yeah. as it falls away, that's it's less of an issue. That's what Parker was saying. They don't normally do the plastic on the a slope, right. but they like it on the big flat yeah. expanse. Yeah. This may be like watching grass grow. But to us, this is like watching a fine uh, theater production or a dance theater, well choreographed. Everyone knows their part. This is long awaited. So tell me, honey, what these guys are doing. They each have a role here, don't they? So we got the two guys on the board. Two guys on the board, a couple of guys behind the board, and what they're doing is they're preparing where the board needs to go so that the board workers aren't overstressed. So they can work, they can finesse that concrete the way they want it to go. So they fill in the low spots and Yeah, they push in, they push out. High. 
Yeah. You have uh, you have one observer. He's the foreman. He's looking at the way this is all going. That's this guy in the gray yeah, gray shirt he yeah. just grabbed. See, he he realized that's enough concrete, so he pulls it out. Yeah. The, this guy in the yellow shirt that's moving that arm, that takes some strength. We've seen him really have to push oh yeah, to get that moving. Coming down that shoe. He just gave the signal to move. Well, what's impressing me about this door is the way they're, they're creating the expansion joints. If you look out onto the field, you can see that there's different expansion joints and they're doing different things. And uh, because of the fall of the, uh, the slope. Yeah, right between where these two guys are with the board, I can see a diagonal line, very faint right now. Yeah, yeah, but there, there are diagonals, there's horizontals, and we didn't get that at all with that first Oh floor. no. There was maybe oh, no. four or five joints in the whole thing. <laughs> and really crappy joints. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So as earlier today, if only we had Vibra, VibraVision, you could feel it. But it's looking real good. Oh my gosh, he's actually measuring for where the control joint goes. That's what they're doing. So everyone has assumed their position now. Yeah. I'll just point it out that uh, the guy is doing the, the surface screaming, buttering. Very dairy. This is not a vegan concrete job, is it? They yeah. butter the top. Oh, uh, they butter it. Yeah. It's got some cream. These guys over here are ready. Ready for the pour. This is right about where it, uh, where the top crowns, isn't it? So yeah. this is a, an important juncture right there. That well, looks like we've got a nice arc of concrete. Try to get a little bit more up. Otherwise, you got to push it uphill. it up. It's a little bit trickier it seems like fighting gravity. Meanwhile, back at our control joint. 
the butterers. We dedicate this film to the Johnsons in Arizona for their prayers and energy because it's going really well. We appreciate what they've done. As well as all our other friends and family who also send good energy. But yeah. I agree that uh, if we started with a, a target market of two, it might be them. But we thank you all of our faithful subscribers. Oh yes, the many, many yeah. subscribers. Hey, we're up to like, a, I think we have 40 subscribers. <laughs> Yeah, the ones that saw the, uh, the, the, the first war and, and the tragedy of that are probably wondering what happened to this. Yes. And this is the result. We're feeling pretty happy about this, though. This is the top crew, I may have already said that, but out of Charlotte, and boy does it show. I mean, they've got laser levels and tape measures and string. I don't think the other crew had string. They didn't even have string. <laughs> we don't know what they had. They, they were clueless. Yeah. But this crowd is fabulous. It's not that they were clueless. It was just that the job was way too big for them. Yeah. There were yeah. only five of them. And some inexperience. And yeah. Okay, dump truck number six is dumping. That's looking good. But I wanted to come over to these uh, guys doing the creaming. And uh, they're, they're working it. The day is getting a little drier. But this guy up here, he's got a couple of low spots. And what he's got going is he put two sledgehammers on top of his, his piece of equipment there to give him his float, to give him some extra weight. And it looks like it's working. He's starting to get some cream going. He still has a... Uh, One, two, three, four areas. That... Yeah, several flat spots. We're, we're up here in the, in the, the big open triangle, so it's kinda, it is kind of hard to get to that middle. We had asked Parker about that broom finish, if it would be easier for them to not because it was looking so good, but he said, oh no, you definitely want to have a, a broom finish because otherwise it's just a trip hazard. It gets slick and icy, and if you have it broomed, then it, um, it gives you just enough traction, or helps you at least. Okay, here's your how-to on screeding a large amount of concrete. As Don points out, watch these guys' feet. They're constantly moving backwards, but using their back foot to drag material forward since this is they're working uphill. So we've got two guys on the screed. The young guy in blue to keep them filled in. I guess two guys to keep them filled in. But the guys with the board, which is actually it looks like a steel 2x4, interesting action that is. Meanwhile, Don has set up a, a, a hose cleaning station for the guys to use. And he's also using it to keep the concrete moistened. Continues to be a beautiful day. It's probably in the 60s by now though, so it is warming up. Okay, just wanted to highlight that action there. Oh, and this we've seen him do a lot as well. As they start to screed, they're constantly uh, throwing material. That one's by hand. We've also seen them use their, their hawk. Also seen them use a shovel. 
depending on what they do, but they generally, it seems like, have to throw their shovel of concrete about 10 to 20 feet. Okay, they're moving fast on this, but it looks like, ah, they finally finished this load of concrete. Let me zoom in a little bit. Our guy doing the screeding, you can see he walked right out into the middle of it. So interesting how they get concrete going. Well, I think we've answered the question as to when do you break for lunch. That would be once you've finished with the concrete that's already been poured. So you can see they've all jumped onto uh, knee skids and floats and they got their trowels out. So they are all on it. Khan was pointing out that their broom guy, he comes at just the right time when the um, you have to let it set up enough so that, unlike the last group, you don't push the cream into the, the control joint. Um, but that takes timing and patience. This guy in orange on the stick, he's the control joint guy. I think his, uh, his tool there, it looks like he's got to work it, probably because it's it is getting a little bit harder, but it still seems quite workable. Let's see here in the here in the shade, this guy's probably has an easier time of it because of the shade. And apparently, their gymnast says to boot. So they've got to learn how to walk the the. 2 by 4 which even in the, the gymnasts get a full 4 inches, 2 by 4 is only 3 and a half, so... I think you could have an Olympics competition for concrete board walking. Anyway... I'm kind of surprised that truck number seven has arrived. Because this is just a few minutes later and everybody's still working away up here. And they're making progress, but maybe they'll just have him sit on ice for a little while. Which they could do, I suppose. Every time I look out, there's just something more and interesting to, to take a, a film of. I don't know if you can see it. And zoom in a little bit on these guys. Here's our gymnast. So we got a nice control joint there. There's another nice control joint there. It's a little bit... Um, You can't quite see the, the far line, but you'll see it later. Here's another control joint. Just so happy to have nice lines. Love the lines here. I think he might have done one a little bit too close. We'll see how that works out. But up here, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. I even put a little triangle in there. I think because that's where... Uh, the upper area starts to widen out. I'm just going to go see how the broom guys are doing. There's a spot right in the middle. Let's see how it's working out. So we got one guy over there. Zoom in on the broom work. He's coming up to this middle area. Slow and steady. There's still a couple of squares here, but those are pretty easy. But if you count out the one, two, that third square, I do not know how they're going to get to that one. 
and then there's two squares over here that I think they can get easy enough from down here. Hopefully this video is picking up the slight difference in shine. Meanwhile, down at truck 7, got somebody uh, breaking up the uh, rough concrete that's been sitting for a while. Uh, kind of smoothing it out. Because it's been probably about an hour or so since the last truck. Does that feel about right? About an hour since the last truck? Oh no. How long has it been 40 since? 40 minutes. Oh, that that's just been sitting there? Okay. Yeah. That's not too long. Meanwhile, these guys actually are moving pretty quick down here. They look joints. They're looking really good. Oh, the joints are beautiful. That's what I came out to take a picture of. Even this triangle joint. Why do yeah. you suppose they did a triangle there? Well, because of, uh, they know how to... Because they know what they're they doing. To, they know how to gauge where there's going to be stress. Yeah. So now we've got three guys left uh, doing the finishing on the on the part they've already smoothed. And right about here is where truck number seven started. And then down there, the guys are screeding. I think this truck has finished his load. mistaken, he's still pouring. Meanwhile, back to the guys working the line. Yeah, I think they had measured uh, that top line a little too close to the, the next one, so now they're having to erase that line, which is easier said than done. How do you er erase a line in concrete? With a lot of muscle and a broad trowel. I feel like Truck 7 arrived sooner than they'd have liked, but because these guys have not had a chance to break for lunch. But sure enough, they got that line erased. Okay, so I've solved the question about how do you get to that difficult middle square. And I'll zoom in. And that would be called stocking feet. You just step on it. So that was for sure the square I was most worried about. But now that I've seen them do that, I know it'll all work out. And here are the last couple of squares on the upper edge. <laughs> Meantime, this is working a lot harder, it seems like, on the brooming. I wonder if the concrete is setting up at a different pace. Maybe it's different when it's on the slope, I don't know.
Now surprisingly, truck number seven still has some some concrete in it. I don't think it's going to have enough to do the apron. But, not sure if I know these things. We all had a nice lunch. Truck number eight has arrived, ready to pour. Skid steers cleaning up the edge down there. That looks good. These guys are back on the floats and the lines. The guys brooming. And the soups are checking things out. No sign of our inspector today. As noted yesterday, we think that when things go well, he doesn't see a need to inspect. Of course, when things are not going well, he also doesn't, he gets too stressed and also doesn't seem to inspect. So we might need to re reconsider our hiring practices on our inspector. That's amazing. Well, apparently the amount of steel they had wasn't quite enough, so let's add some more. That's awesome. And look, there's even somebody sweeping the road. That never happened last time. We did a lot of sweeping after the fact. And already we're starting to pull up the form boards. Start by banging out the, the stakes. And start pulling it away. John's estimation is for up to three times as much steel as before. They've even overlaid the steel past the past the edge and now this guy is coming along to trim it off. We've even taken the the excess that overhangs and no need to throw it away, just set it in another spot. I think we're getting really close to pour. Yeah. Don's, Don's noted that uh, these guys out on the metal, they're actually tying it together, which of course that was that's something new, didn't happen last time. But we are down to the room finish and the final uh, butter of truck seven. And here it is, the last load. Don, as the homeowner, how are you feeling about this truck number eight? Well, I never thought this was going to happen. But, what? But we are real happy right now. Yes. This is the end of it. And it's looking fabulous. It's looking excellent. I agree. I did not think we that they could do it, that we would get to a place of happiness here. That appears to be the last bit of concrete. Yep, concrete guy's cleaning out his truck. Lots of work to take something apart as well. The 
getting down to it. Final floats and I'm sure putting the uh, final control joints in. And a final finish groom on the apron. And also very nice to see them sweeping up. And that is just about a wrap for this job. We'll have a final walkthrough tomorrow as a separate video. This has been a long video, but it was a huge day. Thanks everyone for watching, sharing this adventure. It's been an it's been quite an adventure, both in length and ups and downs, but we are definitely ending on a high note. Thanks. One last video of the Friday evening celebration. They're as happy as we are that this job has come to a happy ending. Well, finally the inspector showed up. After everything's said and done, although he's still very intent on that group packing things up. So what do you think, Inspector? Have you been watching all day long? We just couldn't see you? Ah, now I understand. You inspect while out of sight so that you can truly find out what's going on. That's pretty wise. Okay, so this here is Parker and Jack. Yeah. yeah? And uh, Parker's from the central, I guess you're, what's your actual role? So just uh, production manager in Greenville. Okay. And Jack, you run the crew production out Production manager in Charlotte. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. Great. Well, you are the two that made it happen. So we thank yep. you so Absolutely. much for this. Very appreciate so, it. Okay. We are happy, happy customers. Awesome. Which is amazing. Yeah. That's what we try to get. Yep. So. All right. And on they go. The two project managers walk down at the end of a successful day. All right, signing off on this beautiful North Carolina fall evening, the end of a successful project. Good night.